Trigger warning, many discs were harmed making this video. What's up everybody? Today's video is going to have a slightly different flavor to it. Today I'm going to be cutting it in a couple of different sections to give us tips to shoot quality water shots. I've scoured the internet and talked to my card mates who have many, many years of disc golf experience trying to find the best tips to help us make those good shots over the water. I know it can be a huge mental hurdle for a lot of players, so hopefully these tips help us all out, become better players, and achieve our best round possible. Let's go! And we're off with another episode of Tickling Chains. I'm excited for today's episode because we're back to where it all began, beautiful Dryer Park. I'm also excited because we've got an amazing set of disc golfers on the cart today, possibly the best we've ever had. We're also showing off some amazing holes here at Dryer Park. As I said at the beginning, we're gonna show you how to throw water shots today. On our card, we've got the OG of Palm Beach Disc Golf, one of the reasons why we have so many great courses around here, Dan Big Rig. We also have on the card, Naval Veteran, Philly Mike, Michael Kokersberger. Thank you for your service. Also, thank you for that beautiful gun show. Bang, bang! We're also gonna go on a birdie safari with Mason Deal, one of the area's top disc golfers. I'm really excited to see what he's got in store for us today. Rounding out the card, last but not least, is myself on the commentary. Hopefully I can sneak up on somebody and surprise him with a couple of good shots. <laughs> Today we're doing the Water Shot Challenge. Let's get out there and sling some D. Here are the rules for our Water Hole Challenge. Any shot in the water is worth minus three points. Any shot over the water but not in the landing zone is given zero points. Any shot in the landing zone is three points. Any birdie they get on this hole will be a bonus of one point. Our closest to the pin or CTP will be a bonus of three points. And if someone hits an ace, it is worth 10 points. In today's contest, we will be doing three drives off the tee. If you're playing on your own, you can do it differently. But today, we're going to do three shots off the tee. Let's see how it goes. Hole one of the challenge is actually hole three on the course, a 259-foot par three. Here we have a look in the pin. It's right up against the water. Our landing zone for the challenge today is to the right of the tree and the left of the bridge. We also have a road behind the pin, which is out of bounds for the challenge. Let's go to tip number one. Tip number one might seem obvious, but when you get out there in your live round and you're on the tee box and you're staring at that water shot, it becomes a little more difficult. And that tip is commit to your line. We've all been there before, especially me. We're staring at that long tee shot. There's a lot of water. We might have our favorite disc in our hand, our go-to driver. Then all of a sudden, we start thinking, man, I really don't want to lose this disc. So we start reaching in our bag for an expendable disc. Or we try to throw uh, way left or way right to uh, you know, cross the water the shortest distance possible. Unfortunately, that's not a recipe for success for your best round possible. A lot of times when we make those little short shots, uh, you know, it leaves us with a difficult upshot, or since we're not committing to begin with, uh, we might make a mistake on that, and then we end up in the water anyways. So commit to your line, have confidence in what line you choose. It's almost like we want to imagine there's no water at all. If there wasn't any water on that hole, what line would you throw? Go ahead and commit to that and throw it with confidence. That's what committing to the line means. Yeah, you might have to hang that disc way over the water for a very long period of time, but that's the recipe for success. That's how you get your best round possible. Of course, you're gonna sink some disc. I've been playing a year, I've probably sunk like 50 discs. That's what happens sometimes. But if you're gonna improve your game uh, and you're gonna make yourself the best player possible, you have to learn to commit to what line you want to throw. I know it's scary, but it's an important tip for throwing water shots. Philly Mike coming right out of the gate with an amazing left-handed sidearm. Look at this. Boom. Parking our first hole in the challenge. What a great job by him. Here comes Dan with a big spike hyzer. Looking like it's going to end up boom right by the pin. As I said, these guys are great disc golfers. Here comes Mason committing to that line following tip number one way over the water and look at this boom dropping it right by the pin what a drive there 
Here's my first drive of the contest. A little bit to the left. That'll end up being safe and in the landing zone. We'll see what my next two drives will hold. Philly Mike back in, making history. First ever left-hander on the card. Beautiful little sidearm. We'll see if it's got enough. Ooh, little skippies. Does end up being safe. Here's Dan's second drive. Ooh, big spike hyzer. Once again, committing to that line way over the water. Ah, oh, unfortunately, didn't quite get it in the landing zone. He'll be wet. Mason also throwing it right at that bridge, hoping at a hyzer back. Ah, didn't have enough this time, unfortunately. Here comes mine, also committing to that bridge. Didn't get the right angle on the disc, unfortunately. That'll plop just in the water. Big time dagger there. Mike back at it again with this left-handed sidearm. Oh, baby. This looks silky. Bang! Oh, my God. Parking that thing, dropping it right under the pin. Amazing drive. Dan going mid-range here. I couldn't believe it. Right at the pin. Awesome drive. Ends up being safe. Mason's going to give us the forehand look on this hole from a right-hander. Gets it over a little bit too much. That'll be safe, but not in the landing zone. So we won't get any points for that drive. My final drive of the first hole in this contest. Once again, committing to that line, Raymond, right at that palm tree. Uh, getting, oh, skips off the island and back into the water. Let's take another look at Mike's drive. He's our CTP winner on the first hole. Little follow flight there. Oh, my God, beautiful. Drops right by the pin. And here we have the carnage for our first water hole challenge. So Let's get to these putts. Here's my birdie look. Ooh, looking good. Oh, off the cage. Nice little bid by me there. Philly Mike, bang! Dropping that putt in. Great putt by him. Oh, Dan, just a little short. Been there before. But look at this. Right after that, cashes that putt. Mason just dropped in his putt. And here's our scores for hole one. Mike taking All right, hole two of the challenge. Hole seven on the course of 312 par three. We've got the pin tucked up on this island under some trees. Difficult hole for a backhanded, right-handed player. The water carries about 265 feet. Our landing zone today is get it on the island, but we have to be to the right side of the bridge. Here's tip two. Tip number two for throwing good water shots is use your most trusted disc. Here in my hand, we have a destroyer, and this is definitely not my most trusted disc. I am not nearly good enough to be throwing a destroyer yet. So, why do I have it in my hand? Well, because it's a really cool disc and Ricky Wysocki's awesome, but it's just to show you, you don't always need to crush a distance driver off the tee to make a good water shot. Your most trusted disc could be a mid-range. It could be a beaded putter. Whatever that most trusted disc you have in your bag, go ahead and use that. And the reason being is you always know how it's going to fly especially if you have to deal with any sort of weather conditions, whether it be wind, whether it's rain, whether uh, it's early in the morning and there's a lot of dew on the ground, that's gonna affect how the disc skips. You wanna use your most trusted disc so you know exactly how that disc is going to fly when it comes to that water hole. That way you can commit to your line and be more confident when you do commit to that line. So tip number two is use your most trusted disc. Our leader, Mike, getting us off the ground with the sidearm here. Ooh, looks a little low, but oh, a nice line. Skips it up on the island. We are playing. Uh, the island line has a road in the back of it. That's also not in the landing zone. Dan, just pure in that backhand line. Great job, him. Here we have the forehand look. Also, Mason following a tip. Just really trusting that disc to Heiser back, throwing it over the bridge. Great job by him right on the island. Let's take another look at this. Hanging it out there, new angle. Just hanging it out over that bridge, trusting that it's gonna come back, plop right on the island. What a great drive by him. I'm going backhand, also using the disc. I know he's gonna hire her back. And look at this, plop, skips right up to the hole. That's our CTP drive. Finally got a good one in there. Ooh, Philly Mike, nice little drive there. He'll have a putt for birdie. Here comes Dan with the backhand drive. Gets it to the open spot. Nice drive by him. Good little turn. Fade back safely on the island. Great job, him. All right, Mason, another forehand. Beautiful. Just eviscerating this forehand line. 
trusting that disc. That's his most trusted favorite disc. That's his Firebird. He loves that thing. Again, another putt for birdie. Comes my drive. Oh no, the danger of throwing water holes, especially in this one, is throwing it too high and ending up in the water like I just did and losing your disc forever. RIP my disc, sad face by me. Here comes Mike, flicking that lefty forehand. Fading, ooh, yep, he's safe over that water into the island. Here comes Dan with his drive. Ooh, a little bit of grip lock. Did get some tree love there. He ended up keeping his disc dry, just not in the landing zone, thankfully. Here comes Mason, just absolutely, that forehand line he's throwing is awesome. Look at that, he'll have another putt for birdie. My final drive, backhand, ooh, a little high again. Making that same mistake, two drives in a row, not good. Also got tree love, ended up be safe, but not in the landing zone. Let's take another look at Mason's drive here. This forehand line is a great selection in this hole. Once again, using his trusted disc, knowing exactly what he's gonna do. Let's get to the putts. Dan, oh, oh no, just barely out. Mike, ah, a little high. Comes Dan again for another birdie look. Bang! Great job by him getting a birdie. Feeling Mike, another birdie look. Ooh, just a little low. And third one, ah, cage. Been there before. And here we go. Mason's gonna yeah. go ahead and put on a absolute putting clinic for us. Look at yeah. this. Crouching tiger, draining putts. What a job by him. Here's me tapping in my CTP. Yay, me. Here's our scores after two holes. Philly Mike, still in the lead. Hole three of our water challenge is hole eight on the course of 325 foot par three. The basket is out a little bit on a little mini peninsula and our landing zone is to the right of a little power box and inside a path that surrounds the basket. Here we go with tip number three. The third tip for water shots is consider the weather conditions before you set up your shot. Wind is gonna have a great effect on how your disc flies, whether it's a head or a tailwind or even a crosswind. So we wanna make sure we know how our disc flies in each one of those weather conditions. Also, things like rain are going to affect how your disc flies. Traditionally, it's gonna make it a little more overstable. Also, we wanna consider if the grass is wet. Maybe it just got done raining or there's dew on the ground. We don't wanna have a situation where we land that disc in a great spot and then the wet grass skips the disc or slides the disc back in the water. That would be a huge heartbreaker. So we wanna take the weather conditions under consideration before we let that confident shot go. So make sure you're checking the wind, rain, what have you, before you take that shot. Traditionally, wind is going to have a greater effect over the water than it would in the woods, mainly because there's not that many obstacles to block that wind. So you also need to consider that. So weather considerations is tip number three when shooting over the water. Philly Mike still with the box, gonna give us a left-handed sidearm here. Nice little flex on it. Looks like it's got the distance. That'll be safe in the landing zone for three points for him. Here comes Mason showing us the sidearm look. Smash, Woo. oh, and he gets a flyover from the airport. Wow, nicely done. Look at this, ooh, spikes in there nicely. He'll have an easy look at birdie. Up next is Dan. Oh my, is that over the fountain? Jeepers, that's a smash. And parked, that's also our CTP drive for the day. Here's me, tough act to follow. A little bit to the left, looks like it's definitely got the distance and that'll be in the landing zone just barely, but it's in there. Here's Mike with the second drive. Ooh, getting a little bit of turn on it. We'll see if it's safe. Another camera view. Oh, it's dry, but it's out of the landing zone. Mason with a smash on his backhand. Nice line here. Going to hyzer just to the left of the basket a little bit. He'll have a birdie look. Here comes Dan. Ooh, this is a nice line. Oh, what a skip. Let's get a different camera view of this drive here from Dan. Looks like he's, oh yeah, that's a sexy flexy right there. Great skip. Woo. Two feet to the right and he's got himself a skip base. Here I am, a better angle on my backhand drive here. Looks like it's gonna hyzer a little bit left to the basket. Should have a birdie putt there. Here comes Mike with his third. Ooh, a little hyzer to the left. That disc will be dry, but is not in the landing zone. Mason going back to the forehand. Ah, 
turns it over a little bit. Ah, frustrated. I know the feeling. Oh my God, what a smash. He just put some mashed potatoes on that thing and he parked it, oh my word. We're gonna have to take another look at that later. Here's my third, a little bit to the left. Once again, has the distance and it'll sneak in the landing zone. Let's take another look at Dan's drive. Oh my God, that's over and to the right of the fountain. This angle doesn't do it justice, guys, but that is some mashed potatoes right there. My word. Here comes Mason for his birdie attempt. Go, oh, great bid, just some cage. Coming right back at it with his other drive. Yeah, right in there. Dan for birdie. Bang. Dan for birdie. Bang. Dan for birdie again. Oh, chains. No way. Here's my birdie attempt. Bang. Yeah. Nice putt by me. And Philly Mike rounded it out. E oh, just a little bit low. Dan just crushing that hole. Great shot of him. Creeps back up, but Mike's still in the lead. The final hole of our challenge is hole 18 on the course. It's a tough one. Tight gap off the tee. Also a downhill shot. The pin is protected by two giant trees. And we also have a long 290-foot water carry. On this challenge, we're going to go anything to the right of this big building is safe for three points as long as you land it on the island. Now for tip number four. Tip number four for water shots is to stay relaxed and do not muscle the disc. Muscling the disc is not going to give us any extra distance, and more importantly, it's going to mess with our release point. More than likely, when you muscle the disc, you're going to grip lock it and throw it way to the right, which is probably not where you're aiming, which will make it end up in the water somewhere where you can never find it again. So if you stay relaxed, keep that form nice and smooth, and uh, do not muscle the disc, you're gonna have that proper release point and get the most flight out of that disc you possibly can, which would make it go exactly where you're aiming it. Anytime you muscle up the disc, you're messing up your form, which means you're gonna mess up your release point and not throw the disc where you want to. So tip number four, stay relaxed and do not muscle the disc. Mike leading the way here on our last hole. He's through the gap safely. Looking all right for now. Oh no, it's heisering hard to the left. Will he be dry? Oh no, that disc is wet. Unfortunate break there from Mike. Here comes Dan. Woo, gets a little turn on this. That's a nice looking drive. That'll heiser back on the island. He'll have a birdie putt. Here comes Mason. Nice looking backhand here. Good line. Oh yeah. Ooh, a little skippy skip. He'll have a nice birdie putt. Here comes my drive. Griplock off the tree. Oh no, in slow motion into the water with a skip and another skip. Oh no, this is the face of a man who has just lost one of his favorite, most reliable distance drivers. What a dagger. Here we go, round two for Mike. See what he can do through the gap safely. Nice job there. Oh no, another hyzer to the left. Ah, oh, will it make it? Will it make it? Oh, unfortunately, no. Poor Mike, I know the feeling. Here comes Dan with his second. Nice line here, right at the basket. He'll get a little tree love, that'll knock it right down. Gonna be a tough look for Birdie. Here comes Mason, oh yeah. Smooth line here, right where you wanna be. Little tree love as well. Ooh, skippy skip, ooh, sliding. Oh, oh, whew. End up being safe, he'll have a very long look for Birdie. Here comes my second, hopefully I can correct my error from the first round. And I do want through the gap safely. Pretty nice line here. That's gonna tickle off a tree. Give me a little skip. I'll have a, a very hard look for birdie. Mike with his third. Come on, get that bad boy over. Get it over. And looks like, yes, it's gonna be safe. Nicely done. Here comes Dan with his second. Smashed potatoes. This is a great, great line. We've all lost the disc at this point. We don't know where it is, but that's the face of a man who just parked the hole on 18. That's our CTP drive for this hole. My third. Duff, threw it too high off the tree. Thankfully, I throw it so high off the tree that it end up uh, being dry. Here comes Dan for his birdie look on his first drive. 
Ooh, ooh, it's so close. Oh, what a bid from distance. Mason with his birdie look. Looks like a far one. Ooh, let's, yes. ooh splash. What a step putt. Let's look at that again. Great use of the legs here. Clean release. Beautiful line. Splash. Oh. Awesome, awesome putt. Here comes the second look at birdie. Went for it. No pars in this game, so you might as well go for it. Here's Dan's Park Drive. Great job. That also gives him the win on this contest. Here's me trying to forearm throw in. Pretty close, but no cigar. And that's it for the game. Looks like Dan edged it out in the last hole. Great job, him. And that's all we got for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. And if you keep watching, I'll keep making them. Just do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and go ahead and share it. RIP to our fallen discs. I know I lost two big ones for me today, but hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Congratulations to Dan Mills. Absolutely crushing discs out there today. Great job by him. Also, thank you to Philly Mike, Michael Kopersberger. Great job out there today. Just lost the lead at the end. And of course, another thank you to Mason Deal, showing us some great lines and doing a great job out there today. Really appreciate both those guys coming out as well. Until the next time we see you here at Tickling Chains, sling them straight and hit those chains. Peace.